the moment we talk of Hatha Yoga, we start visualizing the stretching and the sweating aspect. And as we advance into so-called yoga, we create the program beginners and advance and further by adding the number of postures. But the originator of yoga, the Lord Shiva, explains in uh, one of the Hatha Yoga text that there are 8.4 million postures Then how we can design the program and claim which is the advanced yoga program. In reality, the yoga has been misunderstood. For example, in Gita we talk about yoga is equanimity of the mind. By Patanjali, we talk about Yoga Chitta Vratti Nirodha. The emptying of the contents of the mind is yoga. And even uh, when we talk of Hatha Yoga based on the 6,000 years old tradition of yoga, we say Hakara Kirti Tahasuri Estra Karas Chandra Uchyate Surya Chandra Masuri of Goti Hathyogo Nigadrati. Or sometimes we say Jivatma Paramatma no Hathyogo. That literally means the Ha Ta. Ha represents the right flow and the Ta represents the left flow. But if we compare the, I would call it a theory of the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere of the brain. I would uh, rather conclude and suggest that those great masters have realized the balance in the flow of energy fires the brain to revive it and in turn mind awakens to the highest reality <clears throat> whereas science is still at the physical level the gray matter that's why we talk of the right hemisphere of the brain the left hemisphere of the brain but yoga says right flow right there is energy has two aspects uh, the that one represents the right hemisphere of the brain, the left represents the, uh, the second represents the uh, left hemisphere of the brain. So there are two aspects. How long we have to achieve perfection in yoga if yoga is a physical stretching and the sweating related to core strength, alignment, is it not that we have forgotten the ultimate goal of yoga? Every text, every tradition, exception with the modern styles, says that yoga leads to knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of... Uh, subjective reality and that subjective reality is our real self. Further it says that this knowledge of yoga is a power. Is it really power or weakness for us? Knowledge, I acquire the knowledge for example of a particular gazette. I get entrusted 
then I have a desire to possess it. Is it a weakness or a strength? The second kind of a knowledge, that knowledge is a complete knowledge of ourselves. The complete knowledge inspires us. And what is that complete knowledge? It is about who am I. That is where the journey of yoga begins. In order to make the things clear about knowledge and yoga, we should understand there are two types of the knowledge. The knowledge acquired from outside by the mind and the knowledge revealed from within about the self. So we can acquire any kind of a knowledge in the external world and Google is knowledge. You can say any information you can gather from the Google. But that is outside the human frame. Yoga talks about the knowledge inside the human frame. Rather, it transcends the body, the mind, the intellect, the ego, and reaches to the real self. Can the mind know the real self? The moment we see if I use the term, we experience the real self, there is no experience by the mind. The mind is not there. So what happens? The mind evolves through the different practices of yoga and ultimately emerges into the real self. Then how should I know the real self? By the real self itself. That is the greatest barrier of the mind. The mind knows the entire world, but it doesn't know itself. So the journey of yoga, we can say that the mind starts knowing itself. The mind starts studying itself. And that is what the Eastern wisdom and the Eastern psychology is. When the mind starts studying itself, that is what the great master says. Then we realize this mind exists in five subjective and the five objective states. The first subjective state is a wandering mind. The second is the lazy mind. The third is the crazy mind. Only the fourth state of the mind helps us to take the journey of yoga. Where is the fourth state? In the fourth state, we are very clear about the goal of our life. Goal of life, not goal in life. Goal in life is about career, money, positions, and everything of the objective world. But the goal of life, where is that? To know thyself. Who am I? It is the self-discovery. The self-discovery cannot be achieved when the mind is wandering, when the mind is lazy, when the mind is crazy or reacting. That is why the Eastern psychology works on the mind to drop all its objectivity to reach to the empty state of the mind. Once we reach to that empty state of the mind, we also realize that the mind is constantly evolving. Say, for example, in the state of uh, mindfulness, the mind, the awareness and attention remains within. How can you have any kind of a wandering and crazy and the lazy mind when the mind remains aware and attentive deeper within? 
you cannot take your sense organs inside. So there is a natural state of emptiness. In that state, what the neuroscience says, it fires the brain and rewires. The recent studies suggest that the regular practice of yoga, that is, emptying the contents of the mind, helps us to bring about a change in our attitude, in our behavior, in our personality. It helps in reducing our anxiety, our stress, but that is not the goal. The goal is much deeper and higher to allow the mind to become a transparent mirror. When it becomes a transparent mirror, there are two expressions. Either it merges, we can say it merges into the highest state of the consciousness. And what is that highest state of the consciousness? It is of the nature of peace, happiness, love, wisdom. It has no opposites. And other masters explain that this mind evolves. So when it evolves, it drops its complementary opposites of likes, dislikes, hate and love. You know, it stops craving. It knows that everything is within us. So going back and summarizing this uh, episode, simply means that yoga is a journey of conscious evolution and a transformation of which postures are one part of it. Thank you.